Since Classic WoW came out in 2019, I have spent over 10,000 hours playing. And I have to say, I've done pretty much everything that I've wanted to do. That being said though, lately, the Vanilla WoW Hardcore Challenge has been really a big breath of fresh air. But, for the last year or so, I've been coming up with another game mode on top of that, all on my own, that I think really elevates the hardcore gameplay experience. Now, I have a really big OSRS history, and while I don't play much these days, I still enjoy some OSRS content on YouTube, namely, content relating to zone-restricted gameplay in which your character is really severely limited and how they can navigate around the world. I always thought it would be interesting to approach Classic WoW from this angle, so I came up with a new game mode for Classic WoW, and we're calling it the Zone Man Challenge. Now the premise is pretty simple. When you make a new character, all of the zones and capital cities are off limits for you outside of your three faction starter zones. If you want to unlock a zone that's off limits, you need to purchase that zone by spending profession points. So basically, if you want to navigate throughout the game and to level up your character, you absolutely must level your professions. The challenge is balanced such that if you have 5 maxed out level 300 professions, you'll ultimately be able to purchase every zone in the game, but it will obviously be quite a challenge to get to that point. Additionally, each time you purchase a zone, the subsequent purchases become cheaper, though your first couple zone purchases are really, really expensive. I balanced the purchases this way because I wanted your early zone purchases to feel really impactful and because as you level your professions, they get more challenging the higher up you go. Also, if you ever decide to drop a profession in order to learn a new one, you will go into point debt, or in other words, you will have negative points if you've already spent those points on zones. This means you'll have to work your way out of point debt with your new profession, and it also ensures you don't end up leveling skinning to 75, then dropping it over and over and over again to easily purchase every zone in the game. This is a really interesting challenge because Classic WoW has 9 playable classes, 8 playable races, and 6 different starter zones. Then, branching out from there, there are pretty much an infinite number of ways to progress through the zones and progression combinations, so every zone man's journey will end up being very different and unique. You are really forced to slow down, get immersed, and take in all that Classic WoW has to offer. And to help facilitate this game mode, as you might have noticed, I've worked with the legendary add-on author Tomcat to create the Zone Man Challenge add-on, which is currently in its beta test phase, but will release for free very soon. But what happens if you try to go into a zone that you haven't unlocked yet? The Dark Void awaits you. Well, so yeah, you don't want to do that. But with all of that being said, let's get right into it and make Classic WoW's first ever Zone Man. But first, a word from today's video sponsor, Power Gum, which is an amazing chewing gum with caffeine, vitamin D, and vitamin B complex. Power Gum is a smooth, great feeling energy boost that will make you feel alert and high functioning without that awkward energy spike or drowsy crash later on. Power Gum is also actually my own company and has directly funded the development of the Zone Man Challenge add-on. We've also sold almost 10,000 boxes worldwide and over 50% of first-time customers come back and make a second purchase. So odds are, you'll probably like it. Now, you can go ahead and check out the video description down below for a link and make sure to use code ZONEMAN for a 10% discount. Okay, so we are going to name our Zone Man character Zone Maxer because we are maxing out each zone for all it's worth and also somehow the name Zone Man was already taken. But that's okay. I'm also going to be playing a Night Elf Warrior because I think probably Night Elf will be the hardest Zone Man race for a couple reasons that we can get into in a couple moments. And I think Warrior is the hardest class to play, which reminds me, we're not just doing any old Zone Man, we are doing a hardcore Zone Man, which means if we die, we are going to have to delete our character and start all the way over. 
So starting in Teldrassil means we are very, very limited in the professions we can pick up early game. Ideally, I want to go mining and blacksmithing, plus of course all of the secondary professions, cooking, first aid, and fishing, but I can't even train fishing until I unlock Darnassus, and I can't unlock mining or blacksmithing until I get to Darkshore. So starting off as a night elf is going to be brutal. This means we're going to have to pick up herbalism and skinning as sort of filler professions just to get th enough points to purchase Darnassus and Darkshore, then drop those professions, go into point debt, then pick up mining and blacksmithing in Darkshore, then work our way out of debt by mining a bunch of tin and copper all over Darkshore. And also, side note, there aren't even any mining nodes on Teldrassil for some reason, so I really need to get to Darkshore ASAP. However, before leaving the safety of my starting zone, Shadow Glen, I want to make sure I'm probably level 6 or so, just to make sure I'm not underleveled, because being underleveled is a great way to die on a hardcore zone man warrior. I'm also going to try to set my hearthstone at Dolinar, and pick up cooking, pick up herbalism, and pick up first aid in town, then run west and grab skinning right outside of Darnassus before I really start banging out quests, so that I can start farming profession levels as early as possible. Now almost every monster I kill will help me level my skinning or cooking professions, and I can also hopefully get some linen cloth from the humanoid so I can start making bandages as well. And of course, I'm going to be picking every single flower along the way. It's actually kind of nice knowing that I'll be dropping skinning and herbalism in Darkshore, because it means I can just vendor all of the leather and herbs for some extra copper, which will help me get going. I'd like to purchase some of the gear from the mail vendor in Dolinar just to provide a little bit of extra survivability for the early game. I think right now the goal is to try to complete all of the easier, sort of safer quests right now while I'm still sort of weak and underpowered. Then, once I get some gear and some new skills after leveling, I can try to safely bang out all of the harder quests in Teldrassil once I'm a little bit more prepared. Also, while I'm trying to boost up my professions as much as possible, if I can help it, what I want to do is probably prioritize cooking and first aid as much as possible while thinking about getting profession points, because we know I'm going to be dropping skinning and herbalism later. And the more points I have in skinning and herbalism, that really just means more debt I'm going to have once I drop those. So now we have our very first 150 profession points and we can go purchase Darnassus, which immediately unlocks the fishing trainer and a bunch of new quests to help us level. Darnassus is a huge first purchase for us. So fishing and cooking go together really, really well. So now those professions can sort of start synergizing and we can also turn around and take care of some of the more difficult quests in Teldrassil that we skipped a little bit earlier now that we're a little bit more prepared. It's going to be really nice to always have a food buff up. That will make things a little bit easier, and later on we'll also always have our weapon sharpened due to blacksmithing. And I have to say, wrapping up some of the harder Teldrassil quests with decent vendor gear and being slightly overleveled is really a smooth experience. So now the plan is to continue leveling and wrapping up the harder Teldrassil quests. Ideally, we can get to level 12 or 13, I guess that's the dream, and keep on farming profession points so we can purchase Darkshore for 90 points, then we can really get our professions locked in and pick up blacksmithing and mining. Also, now that we have fishing, we can really power level that up for a while, which will also directly boost our cooking really fast. It's also nice to stack up on a bunch of food buffs that we can use on quests that seem sort of risky. Okay, so now that we've wrapped up pretty much everything that there is to do in Teldrassil, we're level 13, our professions are decent, we've powered our professions up to a point that we have enough points to purchase Darkshore, it's time to hop on a Hippogriff and fly to the mainland, leaving the safety of our starter zone. This also means that finally we are able to actually pick up the professions that we want. We can drop skinning and herbalism, we can pick up mining and blacksmithing. Yeah, we're going to be in debt for a little while, but long term I think this is going to be a really fun way to approach the Hardcore Zone Man Challenge on a warrior, because we'll be able to make some of our own gear for ourselves. That being said, we are going to need a metric ton of copper and tin, mainly copper, to get our mining and blacksmithing up so we can work our way out of debt, and Darkshore is not known for its mining, to say the least, so it's going to be kind of a hard time. But on the plus side, Darkshore has a ton of XP. In my opinion, it's probably the best 10 to 20 zone, and some really good quest lines. So I think our goal is to get to level 17 or so, ideally 17, in Darkshore before we look to move on, but of course, we also need to do some serious mining in, addi in addition to continuing to level our secondary professions before we can even think of leaving. 
It's actually kind of nice that by maintaining cooking and fishing, you actually unlock a lot of bonus quests that normally I don't do at least in the level 10 to 20 zones that really help you level quite a bit. And now we have a sharpening stone applied to our weapon in addition to a food buff. So between those profession bonuses and showing up to Darkshore at level 13, things in Darkshore are going really well so far. Now, as we're working through Darkshore, I'm starting to think about what zone I want to purchase next. I don't think Ashen Vale will be very fun at level 17, there's not going to be a lot to do, we'll probably die, so I think our only option here is to purchase Wetlands and also Lock Modan, then make the very dreaded, infamous Wetlands run and hope that we don't die to the Crocodiles, or what's really my concern are the Oryx in the Mountain Pass at the very end of the run as you head into Lock Modan. That being said, it's going to cost another 150 points to buy both of those zones at once. So the big goal now is to get blacksmithing and mining caught up to my other professions so we can head to the Eastern Kingdoms, but we need to get as much value out of Darkshore as we possibly can first. I think almost every other race has an easier time with professions early game especially than a Night Elf, but I wanted to beta test the add-on on what is pretty much the hardest difficulty. Actually, a Night Elf Druid Zone Man is probably harder than a Warrior because you'd have to buy Moonglade at some point as well. You can definitely tell that Blizzard didn't have Zone Man gameplay in mind when they were designing Vanilla WoW, which is actually why I think the Zone Man challenge has been so fun so far. But now we have finally reached level 17 at long last, we have full 8 slot bags, and we have the profession points needed to buy both Wetlands and Loch Madon. We are finally ready to venture to the Eastern Kingdoms and leave the safety of the Night Elf Lands. Purchasing a new zone and visually seeing the map color change is such a satisfying feeling. It's so rewarding to sort of extract all that every zone has to offer and then move on with intent and preparation into a new zone. But this is where we leave off. Will Zone Maxer make it alive to the wetlands? Will Zone Maxer survive the dreaded swamp run to make it safely to Loch Modan? Find out next time on the Zone Man Challenge. Thank you guys very much for watching episode one of the Zone Man Challenge. This is a brand new type of content that I've never done before, and a lot of time, energy, and money has gone into making the Zone Man Challenge add on. So please make sure to like, subscribe, and go buy some power gum if you'd like the series to continue. Thank you guys very much for watching, and as always, stay safe.